In this video, we're going to discuss activation functions and max pooling. We'll talk about activation functions, and then we'll discuss max pooling. And just a note, this is one type of pooling, and there's several others available in PyTorch. So first, let's talk about activation functions. So we took our block diagram from before, and we're simply going to apply an activation function to each element of the activation map, and we'll get an output. So we have the future map, Z, and we'll apply an activation function to it. So let's do an example. We have our image in our kernel. So we have our tensor, or image. We apply a kernel to it, and then we get our activation map. So now we're going to apply the activation function, in this case a relu, to every element, element in our activation map. And let's store our output in this little table over here. For this quadrant over here, we have a negative 4. And we'll apply the relu function. In this case, we'll get a 0. And let's do these two terms over here. In both cases, they're negative 4, so we get 0. And let's do these three terms in one shot. We apply the relu function, and we get a, a bunch of zeros. And finally, let's do these terms over here. So we have 4. We apply the relu function to each element. We get a 4, and we put that in the output. And that's pretty much it. So we apply the activation function to multiple channels. In this case, because all these terms are negative, these terms are 0, and everything else is the same. And then for the other terms, because everything is positive, we get an identical output. So for convolution, it's just like neural networks. We'll create an image, perform convolution, and then we'll apply the activation function and store it in the tensor A. Now let's discuss max pooling. So a helpful analogy is to think of max pooling like convolution. So instead of performing the convolution operation, you simply choose the maximum value. So in this case, the maximum value is 2. Then we shift over. We select the maximum value. In this case, it's 3. Then we shift over. We select the maximum value. In this case, it's also 3. And we repeat the process, almost identical for convolution. So in PyTorch, it's pretty easy. You create a max pooling object. And you set the size of the area, in this case, 2. You set a stride parameter. And then you apply it to your image. And we get the following results. In max pooling, there's also also an option where the stride equals none. And all you do is you start with a particular region, and you take the maximum value, and then you move to the next region. So for example, if we move on the horizontal direction, the maximum value is 3. And then we move to the next region in the vertical direction, and let's just shift to the other side. And the maximum value is 2. And then we switch to the next region, and in this case, the maximum value is 3. So in PyTorch, it's pretty simple. Setting the stride equal to none is the default parameter. So we create our max pooling object, and we apply it to the tensor, and we get the following output. So now let's see one reason why we do max pooling. So let's say we have two images, and they're identical, but one of them is shifted. If we obtain the max, if we perform max pooling on the images, we get identical results. So it helps to deal with shifts in the image. And there's other reasons, like reducing the number of parameters in your model. And that's it for this section.